What's up? This is Mario, and welcome to Awesome Acoustics. In this episode, we will take a look at the decibel and the sound pressure level, how they are interpreted, and what other types of decibels exist. It is common to hear that the decibel is the measurement unit for sound. However, that is far from the full story. The decibel is a measurement unit used not only for sound pressure, but also for voltage, power, and some other cases. The decibel mainly has two functions. The first one is to express not a magnitude, but the ratio between the performed measurement and a previously established reference. The second one is to reduce a very extensive numerical scale to a smaller one using logarithms. But what is a logarithm? A logarithm is a mathematical function with two numbers, say a and b, which as a result will give us the necessary exponent so that b to the power of that exponent will give us a. Number b is called the base of the logarithm. For example, this logarithm would be read as the log base 2 of 8, and the result is 3, because 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. A logarithm with Euler's number as the base is known as the natural logarithm, also written ln. When the logarithm does not show an explicit base, it is typically assumed that the logarithm is base 10. That is, 10 to the power of something will give us a. However, in some software such as MATLAB, the plain log function is the natural logarithm. If we want to use the log base 10 in MATLAB, we have to use the function log 10. The decibel is not based on the amplitude of the wave, but rather on the power of the wave, which is a slightly different physical concept which I'm not going to explain here. The important thing is that the power of a wave is proportional to the square of its amplitude. So, we can replace these powers with squared amplitudes. And we can simplify by squaring the whole fraction. Then, using some loss of logarithms, we can take this square out as a 2 multiplying. And we arrive to this version. So, when we are using amplitudes, it is very important to use the version with the 20. Also, I want to clarify that here, I am using the convention where the logarithm without an explicit base is the log base 10. There are different types of decibels, which are relative to a different reference. This reference is very important, since the meaning of the specific decibel you are using will depend on it. Generally, zero decibels means that the magnitude is equal to the reference, positive decibels mean that the magnitude is greater than the reference, and negative decibels mean that the magnitude is less than the reference. Decibels SPL, which stands for sound pressure level, are the ones used specifically to measure sound level. In the formula, we see that the pressure is in RMS amplitude, which I explained in the previous video. Generally, decibels will typically use RMS amplitudes. To clarify, I previously used an uppercase P for power, but here, this is a lowercase p for pressure. We also see that the reference is 20 micropascals, which is the minimum sound pressure audible by the human ear, also in RMS. The prefix micro, denoted with the Greek letter mu, means a million times smaller, or alternatively, a thousandth of a milli. For example, one second is a million microseconds, and one millisecond is a thousand microseconds. Then, 20 micropascals are 0.00002 pascals. Recalling that 0 decibels means equal to the reference, then 0 decibels SPL equals 20 micropascals. Therefore, negative decibels correspond to pressures too low to be perceived by our ear. Then, the human being can hear sound pressure levels from 0 decibels SPL and above. Here's a decibel scale so that you can get an idea of the range. However, something important that is not being specified here is the distance at which these measurements were performed, since the sound level would change as we get closer or further away from the source. By the way, sound level is measured with a device like these, called a sound level meter. After 90 decibels, a constant sound can start to cause hearing damage. That is why, in noisy factories, employees must wear hearing protection by law. 
Also, in some lab exercises in the masters, we had to use hearing protection due to the sound level at which we were performing measurements. Around 140 decibels, we start to experience pain. And with even higher sound levels, we can suffer instant damage to the eardrum. However, this scale is a generalization, since we have different sensitivity at different frequencies. This is a curve that describes the sensitivity of the human ear at different frequencies. The decibels in the vertical axis are reference to the sensitivity at 1 kHz, whatever that was. So, logically, here we have 0 decibels at 1 kHz. This does not mean zero sound. Remember that 0 decibels means equal to the reference. Here, we can see how we have gradually decreasing sensitivity towards the extremes. And also, that we have the most sensitivity at 3 kHz. A large portion of the human language is found in this range, so this sensitivity makes sense from an evolutionary point of view. Using this plot as a reference, if we listen to two sounds, one of 1 kHz and the other of 3 kHz, both with the same amplitude, we would hear the 3 kHz sound about 7 decibels higher. Just as we can calculate decibels from pressures in pascals, we can also solve this formula to calculate pascals from decibels. Using this new formula, we can now convert these sound pressure level values to pascals. Here, we can clearly see how the logarithmic scale reduces the extensive range between 20 micropascals and 200 pascals, and the increments are smaller. But another interesting and perhaps more useful thing is that an exponential increment or multiplication in the pressure scale corresponds to a linear increment or sum in the decibel scale. Typically, when we are working with pressure in pascals, we say that we are in a linear scale. And when we're working with decibels, we say that we're in a logarithmic scale. Pascals are more descriptive of how sound happens physically, but decibels are more related to how we perceive loudness, since our hearing is logarithmic. That is, we would not perceive an increment of, say, 0.1 pascals at low pressures the same way we would perceive the same increment at high pressures. The increments of loudness that we hear don't depend on the actual increment in pascals, but rather on the proportional increment relative to a previous value. I will show some examples, but just to clarify, I will only be playing the relative changes and not the actual values in pascals. There's no point in calibrating to those pressures exactly, since in the end, the volume in your computer and the behavior of your speakers will have an influence. Even your room itself will amplify some frequencies more than others unless you're using headphones. Either way, by doing it like this, the examples will not be as aggressive as they would with the actual values in pascals. If we amplify a sound from 0.1 pascals to 0.5 pascals, the difference is very clear, since the pressure is 5 times higher. However, an amplification from 1 pascal to 1.4 pascal would barely be noticeable. Even though it is also an increment of 0.4, relatively, it is a factor of 1.4, much smaller than the factor of 5 in the first example. If we convert these factors to decibels, we see that the increments would be 14 dB and 3 dB. The minimum increment audible by the human ear is around 1 dB. Another unintuitive thing is that double pressure is not perceived as double loudness. According to psychoacoustic studies, our ear perceives approximately double loudness with each increment of 10 decibels, that is, a pressure 3.16 times higher. This is due to a mechanism in the ear that mainly amplifies weak sounds, which makes the scale of the physical phenomenon and the scale of our perception slightly different from one another. Decibels volt are very similar to decibels SPL, only that they are referenced to voltage. That means that these decibels are used for electric tension. The reference is 1 volt, and the measured voltage, as well as the 1 volt reference, are both in RMS. Therefore, 0 decibels volt are equal to 1 volt, positive decibels are greater than 1 volt, and negative decibels are less than 1 volt. For example, 0.2 volt are equal to minus 14 decibels volt. 
Now, we will talk about decibels full scale. In digital audio, there are no physical units like pascals or volts. So, for the instantaneous amplitudes, that is, the amplitude of individual points, a unitless range from minus 1 to 1 is simply used. For example, a point can have an instantaneous amplitude of 0 0.5, 0 0.33, minus 0 0.72, etc. This means that peak amplitudes will go from 0 to 1. Decibels full scale are reference to the maximum possible amplitude in the digital range. Although up until now I have mainly talked about RMS amplitudes, here it is easier to think of peak amplitude. So, in this case, the reference would be a peak amplitude of 1. Therefore, the scale of decibels full scale will mainly show negative decibels, and the maximum allowed would be 0. Here, having positive decibels is not a positive situation. This means that the wave is exceeding the possible range, which typically distorts it. This type of distortion is known as clipping. Specifically, clipping means that the wave is getting cut off at the upper and lower limits of the range, which changes its waveform. The audible distortion is caused by this deformation. In a voice recording, this is what distortion due to clipping would sound like. So the best practice is to avoid it from the beginning by recording with a modest recording level, instead of having it at the maximum. In audio and video software, we tend to see negative sound levels. This is because, since they handle digital audio, they are using decibels full scale. Only in some cases, we will have decibels greater than zero such as when having many audio layers that together exceed the maximum range, or when recording with a high level like in the last example. In these cases, the software gives us a red light to warn us of the distortion. A general disadvantage of decibels is that the only way of representing an amplitude of zero in decibels is with minus infinity decibels, which you can't enter into every software. In these cases, you could enter a huge negative number, but it would be more reliable to simply delete that portion of audio. Decibels are also useful when we think of amplification. Amplifying a wave means multiplying all of its instantaneous amplitudes by a number. For example, to amplify a wave to double the amplitude, we multiply all of its instantaneous amplitudes by 2. To achieve attenuation, we simply need to amplify or multiply by a positive number smaller than 1 for example, 0 0.5. In amplification, decibels are reference to the current amplitude. So, amplifying by 0 decibels causes no change in the wave, adding decibels amplifies the wave, and subtracting decibels attenuates the wave. A simpler way of interpreting this calculation is that we are simply entering the amplification factor directly inside the logarithm, without the need to think of the current amplitude, the new amplitude, or the measurement units. This use of decibels is common in software. Loss of logarithms express that a multiplication within the logarithm equals a sum of logarithms. This means that, since decibels are in a logarithmic scale, they convert multiplications to sums. Actually, we have already seen this when we compared the decibel scale against the pressure scale. This means that a series of amplifications, which were originally multiplications, can now be expressed as sums or subtractions of decibels, which makes decibels very useful in the context of amplification. Here, I show a table where we can see some common conversions between linear scale and decibels. It should be mentioned that these conversions are rounded off, but the decimals are so small that they are negligible. For example, if we have a wave with a peak amplitude of 0 0.5 and we add 6 decibels, we double its amplitude so that its new peak amplitude is 1. In the same way, if we subtract 6 decibels, we reduce its amplitude by half, returning it to a peak amplitude of 0 0.5. Just remember that to reduce the perception of loudness by half, the amount you have to subtract is 10 decibels. Subtracting another 6 decibels, again, reduces its amplitude by half, this time leaving it with a peak amplitude of 0 
This is the reason why each consecutive attenuation seems to have less of an effect on the wave, despite always subtracting the same amount of decibels. In some cases, you might hear that a doubling is achieved by adding 3 decibels, but this is specifically when talking about power. As we mentioned previously, power is proportional to the squared amplitude. So adding 3 decibels effectively doubles power. Meanwhile, adding 6 decibels doubles the amplitude, which corresponds to multiplying the power by 4, that is, the square of 2. What this tells us is that, when doubling the amplitude of a wave, we are also quadrupling the power of the same wave. Remember that there are many more types and uses of decibels. In this video, I have only mentioned some of the most important in acoustics. Finally, I want to talk about something relevant to decibels and that will be useful to us in the future, which is logarithmic axis. When we see a plot, units in the axis tend to be linearly spaced. That is, that each pair of numbers is separated by the same increment. However, there are some occasions where it can be more convenient to emphasize the region of small numbers and compress the region of large numbers. That's what logarithmic axes are used for, and they can be identified by looking at these groups of lines that seem to come closer together. Here, each of these lines represents an increment of 1. Then, these lines represent increments of 10, then increments of 100, etc. That is, the axis is gradually compressing as we go higher up. An example is with sound pressure. To clarify, this is not a wave, but I am plotting amplitudes at different frequencies for a certain case. As we mentioned before, human hearing is logarithmic, so the best solution is to move over to the logarithmic scale of decibels. However, if we take our pressure values, and instead of converting to decibels, we simply plot on a logarithmic axis, we obtain the same shape as the curve in decibels. So, plotting pascals on a logarithmic axis, or plotting decibels on a linear axis, achieve more or less the same thing. The only different things would be the units and the range. Actually, in both cases, this is a good example of how it is easier to visualize the curve, particularly at low pressures. This can also be done in the horizontal axis. In acoustics, frequency is typically plotted on a logarithmic axis, since our perception of frequencies is also logarithmic, as we will see in the next video. With that, we conclude this episode, and in the next one, we will talk about musical frequencies. See you soon!